Okay, so let's just finish this. Hey guys! I am. We are live. We are live! <laughs> Yay! You can leave that home. I think it's okay. I think you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I can take it off the Wi-Fi. You are good. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We are here at the bake shop. As you can see, it's quite it's quite busy here today. It's been, it is it's been, very it's been busy. a good it's been a good Life. Wednesday Tons so of far. Hanging out with us. It's awesome. It's awesome. So as we kind of wait for everybody to come in and join our awesome little Sorry guys, we're just making some little adjustments still. Is that good? Sorry. We are. Mom, <laughs> mom's making all the adjustments. Um, so we are here at the bake shop and we wanted to talk to you guys about... I'm going to say hi to Sue Abel. Hi Sue. Hi Sue. <laughs> we wanted to talk to you guys about um, more of an entrepreneurial Q&A with Kelly and Aaron today. So well, now that we have, uh, you know, this really cool social media team that is around us, as in this one lovely girl, <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> Let's do a little shot of Lindsay. Yay! <laughs> so we have this uh, uh, amazing uh, stuff that's happening for us right now. We've sort of amped it our, our uh, social media. It's kind of going into the stratosphere. We're so excited about it because yeah. it's kind of where we've always wanted to be and pushing it forward. So here we have... Um, someone is helping to direct the traffic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so you guys um, sent us a bunch of questions for us to answer today in our uh, little Q&A with Kelly and Aaron, all about being an entrepreneur and what it's kind of like to, first of all, work together, what it's like to own a bake shop and where we're going to be next and all of our growth and all that great fun stuff. Where are we going to be next? So why don't we start next? Why don't we start first? <laughs> why don't we start next? <laughs> wow, it's been a long day. <laughs> oh my God. So it has oh, been a long day full God. of meetings and stuff. Yes. So, uh, so <laughs> let's start first with, okay, so I can let Aaron do the talking. The first question, and the mom can respond. First question is, so what is it like owning a bakery and what was the startup like? Of our bake shop. So what That's is it a like owning, owning, owning a bakery? So, you know, it has to be what you love. So, you know, we, we so enjoy dealing with things that are typically always so, sort of sweet and not necessarily good for you and just raising the bar and making things delicious yet also yeah. a massive healthy component to it and, and not eating empty calories. And so, it's, Owning a bakery to me has, has been my, has my childhood dream. Mm -hmm. So when I started in, a, in my mud pie kitchens back when I was like five years old in my parents' backyard, I always sort of dreamt and fantasized and played make-believe of making these mud pie cakes and having special uh, special sand. Some of the sand was more sparkly than others or lighter or darker so I could, you know, make my own uh, cheesecakes or chocolate torts <laughs> and, you know, they were all made out of mud. Yeah. And my dad would come to the back and he would sample it and he'd go, oh, wow, Kelly, that's like awesome. <laughs> and, and he kept my make-believe going and, and, and I think that I feel that magic here. I feel that, that fairy um, magic being sprinkled on everything that we do. So for me, it's just pure heaven to be yeah. owning a bake shop and running a bake shop and, and just the icing on the cake is being able to do it with Aaron. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the startup, to answer the second part of that question, the startup, um, I mean, we started in 2012, so we've been open since December of 2012, so just over five years now. And, you know, we, we had a lot of growing pains along the way, as, as any small business does when you're just getting started. You know, you're working out, you know, staffing, you're working out your menu, you're working out, you know, making sure enough customers are coming in the door and how are you going to market to these customers. But I think if you take a very, you know, balanced approach to it and you actually, you know, really, really know your customer and really, really know what, what your vision is, I think that the startup can be pretty flawless because I feel like when you have that passion and you have that vision behind you, everything else kind of falls into place. It does. Right? I, for me, I know that there was uh, extraordinary fear. Mm -hmm. And then I, I actually clearly remember the day before our grand opening. So just, we opened December 7th, 2012. And December 6th, um, I mean, we pulled an all-nighter. But the three nights prior even, I was working bell to bell and just sleeping upstairs the second floor yeah. of the bake shop, just on the couch. And the night before, though, we had to get the chalkboard done, which is our famous chalkboard. Yeah. That we haven't touched in five years. So for those of you who ever know me, know that that chalkboard never gets touched. And we've had other staff saying, oh, is it going to be changed sometime? Or should I rub it out? And yeah. I'll be in it like, no! Don't touch um, it. It's, it's so iconic now. Yeah. And and I remember, I remember being, I mean, I'm going to talk about it now. Of course, I get choked up about it. But there was such a line the day that we opened that morning. And I went, 
holy shit, how did we do this? That we had such an amazing following. And so on December 7, 2012, we probably had about, I don't even know, it was 100 people. It was just ridiculous. People in line waiting to be a part of us again, right? Because we had moved up the stream from Kind Food and it was just so magical. So, um, it was awesome. And, and like it was frightening and so rewarding. Yeah, and just to finish up this question, that the, to me, it was, it was the, the grand opening was, was great, it was amazing, but I was so scared. I was like, what's going to happen like the next day? Like, are people actually going to come in the next day? So, you know, you're up all night, you're like, oh my gosh, is this actually going to happen? Or we're actually going customers like the day after the grand opening? And lo and behold, yes, we, yes, we did. And we have ever since. So, yeah, so it's good. Um, so, next question. so next question is, so how did you calculate how much money it would take to open up the bakery? Well, well. you know, whenever we have a budget, you basically just multiply it by two when you're doing any sort of construction or any sort good, of renovation. Though. So uh, that was not good. It cost no. a lot of money to open up this, this business. Yeah. Um, so how did we calculate it was, um, I mean, you, you have to do a business plan, guys, right? Yeah. So that's the first thing you have to do is do a business plan. And that takes sometimes a few weeks, it can take even a few months to develop a really good business plan and I would consult with an accountant. People that are um, you know, experienced entrepreneurs can help with that too. There's tons of online resources too now about uh, creating business plans, but that's something that is absolutely critical. And you know what, the, I mean the great news is about business plans is that they're, they're so ever moving. So even though you put into a business plan, it doesn't mean that you have to adhere to that business plan forever ever and amen. So after you open after a month, you go, like, you know what, it didn't yeah. work out that way, so I had to change gears and go that direction because something else became more profitable or more popular or whatever. Yeah. So you have to be very, you're so much a moving target. It's very fluid. Um, but the way that you calculated, I mean, we, we did. We, we took into account, we had a contractor, a couple contractors come in and give us uh, estimates. Obviously, Ken did the bill there for us, so, you know, yeah. we, we saved a lot of money um, having, you know, Ken in our back pocket because there's no one handier than Ken. It's and, Yeah, he can do anything. Insane. So, um, our expenses came from the equipment um, yeah. for, you know, the beautiful counter, you know, solid marbles. Of, Putting in a new window the, in the yeah, side of the, the business. The window on the south side of the building we installed, and that was to be able to see Lake Ontario from, yeah. from the bake shop, and that was important to us. Yeah. So, these are key pieces. So, you know, and, and as Aaron said, too, you take your budget and sometimes multiply it by two because stuff things, happens. Things happen. We had to do a yeah. new HVAC. You know, we, had, we had so many surprises and because this building is 140 years old, there was a lot of surprises even behind the walls and from no insulation to um, all sorts of things like that that we didn't know till we opened. So. Exactly. But basically, long and the short of it is make a plan. Make a plan, set yourself a budget and give yourself some room for that like emergency fund basically yeah. to give yourself that, that leeway. But next... Um, so, what was the biggest challenge you faced as a new business owner, and how did you overcome it? Whoa, biggest challenge. Do we have the same challenge? I don't, I don't know, actually. That's I mean, a, that's a good question. I think that, the, I, for me, okay, so I think that um, our, our biggest challenge, or, you know, it's one of the biggest challenges, uh, was maintaining uh, Aaron's and my relationship. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Right? And, and I... And you know, we even have we have these discussions on a daily basis. Today you got sassy with me, and so I and she got sassy, sassy back with me. And, you know, stuff happens. Right? Works both ways. But uh, I think that was the biggest challenge. And then we actually both had to do a reevaluation as to what we wanted to accomplish in this business. Yeah. And if we wanted to accomplish ruining a mother-daughter relationship, then we were on the path to do that. Right. So we had to reevaluate that and go, okay, so how are we going to protect this mo most sacred relationship because I don't have another child and Aaron doesn't have another mother. So there's only the two of us. And so this is to me the most sacred of, of bonds and relationships. So we had to jump in and go, okay, so what are we gonna do? So we actually did consult a, a consultant. We actually went and got counseling uh, with um, our a psychologist, and you know, family counseling, um, meditation, yoga. Um, we, we sort of, uh, and so much reading, and so many audio books, right? And Gabby Bernstein, and you know, I can go on and on. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you. I feel like that probably would be the, the biggest challenge because having that as the foundation of the business is, you know, it can be challenging at times because as you guys know, we are mother and daughter, but you know, we, we work together every single day and we have, you know, for five plus, seven plus years now. And um, really trying to maintain that and putting that relationship first 
and setting those, I would say, healthy boundaries, I like to use that word, yeah. is just, you know, knowing when we can be mother and daughter, know when we can be business owners. And to add to those boundaries, what Aaron means, and to expand on that, not that I'm interpreting more, uh, those boundaries are knowing what our strengths are in the business. So if I know that I'm, I'm, I'm the kingpin for finance and, um, and drilling down to the numbers and uh, evaluating those things, and Aaron's strength is operations and dealing with staff and being this beautiful, even keel person that is empowering to people where I tend to be, you know. Mom is very you know, empowering. So, well, I can be. Yes, but I, I think that, I mean I, I, I err on and I, I tend to go towards more of that spice side and we call it and Aaron is definitely you know a different side. So you know we, we have these incredible strengths and so we, we've learned how to play off them. So Aaron goes, okay, mom, it's your time now to say this to this particular staff member because they need this. Yeah. And then I know when a certain staff member needs Aaron's finessing and and this is so awesome for us, right? Because. Uh, I, I, I believe that we've got a, a winning combo that way by having two people that are two very different strengths. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut you off because we're going we're gonna to move on to the next one. Mom just, she could talk forever on all these questions. You guys don't want to do videos by myself. But we're going to try to get through as many as we can. So okay, we're going to try to keep our answers short. How did you figure out your marketing? So how did you figure out your marketing? And that came from Katie. So thank you, Katie. Um, so how to figure out our marketing? Our marketing, we, and this has been a big evolution, I want to say. We, you know, we have tons of features, we have tons of specials, we have tons of things going on in the bake shop all the time. And it's something that, I mean, through a lot of traveling, through a lot of exploring what um, what we love and exploring what our customers love, we're actually able to find um, some incredible bacon. So for example, like our, our Boston cream cupcake, you know, all these really fun things. But for us, we like to just think outside the box. So we're, we never settle for just the status quo. It's like, hey, how can we take what we do and take it to the next level? How can we be even better and you know share this beautiful business with as many people as possible so what's our next game plan so I, we're constantly thinking I think it. that I, I love pushing the envelope mm -hmm. and and life is too short to cause a to not cause a ruckus so, yeah so we we love being um, I call them shift Disturbers. Yeah. That. <laughs> right? I like that. So we 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 love being that those people that just push the envelope and it's like, yeah, let's do a bus. Okay, we're not gonna do one side. You know, no, let's do three sides of it. Yeah, and, let's do the and, and let's make Kelly and Aaron twelve feet tall, right? <laughs> so it was very important for us to brand the mom and daughter because we, we really do know that we have a very unique uh, relationship yeah. and, and and, and when people find out that we're this mom and daughter team and we're rocking this really cool business, then it becomes even more inspiring. So I think it's about being really real, really authentic, and our marketing to me is just raising the envelope yeah. because life is too short to play small. That was a great one, Mom. That was short and sweet. Um, so, Elmira, um, she says, loving the honesty and truth about sharing your experience. Thank you. As a business owner, I believe the most difficult aspect is employee retention, relationship, and training. Do you have a platform in working with your staff? Hmm. Employees are always... Um, it's, it's always one of the biggest challenges, it's, for it's, sure. It's the, it is it's the biggest... Mm -hmm. out, of, out, of any, out of any business owner, it doesn't yep. matter if you're doing cupcakes or restaurants or selling clothing. The corporate world or yeah, whatever it is. And, and, yeah. let me talk for, for us, let me just talk yeah. for one, one second. So for us, I think the biggest thing is creating, creating an environment that our, our staff just love to be a part of. And we try to hire the right individuals that, you know, val that have the same values as us as a whole. So they, they, they love this lifestyle and they are passionate about it so that, you know, when they come into work, it's not like they're coming into work. They're, they're coming in and they're actually being a part of something bigger than them. And they're being a part of this incredible team and this incredible family, right? So I think that that's the biggest thing is creating that, that beautiful, I say trust that two-way street and that open communication, that honesty and that transparency as as business owners to the staff to allow them to feel loved from us. Because to me, yes. to me, if any of our staff are unhappy, that is the last thing that I want it's, in my life. Um, I agree. Mm -hmm. And we're all looking for a connection on the planet. And let's be honest, guys, mm -hmm. why, why you're here 
watching us today. Mm -hmm. It's like 3.15 or so in the afternoon on a Wednesday and, Kelly and, Aaron. and you decided to dial in because mm -hmm. first off, hopefully it makes you feel good, mm -hmm. right? And and it's all about sharing love and sharing connections. And and I think that we, we really want to try to embody embracing all of you guys to, mm -hmm. to take your life to that next level, yeah. right? Because it can be scary, mm -hmm. but it can be exhilarating. And we do this with our staff. We push our staff and we, yeah. we, we talk to them in ways that makes them challenge, you know, even personally how they live their life. Yeah. And, and so it's not just coming here and punching in, punching out. Like they're part of a culture here mm -hmm. to transform them on multiple levels. Yeah. So cute. Laura, Laura Nettleton, we miss you too. Oh, Laura we miss says, you, Laura. Miss, miss working for you guys watching now as I nurse baby number three. Oh my, oh god. my god. I can't believe that. That oh is crazy. My oh my god. Laura, <laughs> I love so it. So nice. So thank you for checking it. in with us. Um, three so babies. Wow. Next question. So this is our final question is what's the number one piece of advice you give someone starting their own business? Oh. Live with passion. Start a business on purpose that's going to change people's lives and everything else will fall into place. And and I would say second piece of advice, sorry, is to really really remember those those starting out days and really cherish those moments and really live in the in the moment in those you know beginning beginning days because I really wish that I did that more yeah, because we were so like oh my gosh we gotta do this we gotta do this oh my gosh this is happening and you know you're trying to grow and build but you're not present all the time I, I wish I had actually kept more journals of yeah. when you and I were just doing the baking yeah I kind yeah. of did even the stuff and what was actually going through our minds and I mean I, I I know there are a lot of tears and frustration and stuff, right? But because it was, we grew really hard and fast at the beginning, and it was really hard. But you know, that that advice is really good. I think I think it's if if you are starting a business, you have to do what you love, yeah. or otherwise it's a job. Yes. So to start a business, it has to be an extension of your life. And so I I would suggest just dig deep first and find out exactly what turns you on. And, and and pay attention to those happy moments and we really reflect this meditation whatever you do to actually get into that moment of going yeah man like, I laughed so hard I felt so good I felt so clear I felt yeah. so like the energy was flowing out of me and and remember those moments and really those are the times that you should consider those that's what you should be doing for a living yeah because then it's no longer a job exactly I love it yeah Oh, and someone's asking if we're hiring. <laughs> sunny, not sunny. I, I love that Instagram. Okay, that's great. Um, we're hiring. We, we're, we're always, we're honestly always looking for incredible people to join our team. So if you go to kellysxo.com, there is a little tab at the bottom of the page, and it says careers, and you can apply online. And uh, yeah, send us, send us your resume. We're always because looking for the right we people. We have some big expansion uh, plans yes. that are happening right now and so which we will share maybe on our next live we would love for you to send us your resumes or stop in and drop it off and say yeah. hi to us and maybe you'll catch us while we're doing a live exactly yeah. you never know you never know yes and, and keep asking all of your questions too because we'll compile them and we'll um, answer we'll them all at the next live that we do so tune in because the next live maybe we'll talk about where location number two is going to be <laughs> bye guys <laughs> Bye.